good at anything, but one thing I think I have a definite grasp on and something I feel like I can help a lot of people understand is how to do nerf integrations. And this is something that I'm very passionate about because I love doing integrations. It's actually really fun for me. And that's most of my blasters I do now are heavy integrations with lots of bodywork, lots of putty, lots of glues and so forth. And what kind of tools do you use for that kind of stuff? Well, I've actually figured out a lot of the best tools that I've used over the years. Because trust me, I've bought a lot of different glues, a lot of different sandpapers, a lot of different epoxy putty. And I've kind of come to grasp on what I think is actually worthwhile. And if you're not in the U.S. or you're a way different part of the U.S. and things are way different than me, then it might be hard for you to get the exact stuff I'm talking about. If you're talking about something else like, hey, will this stuff work? I, I probably don't know because I don't have access to it. But I can give you a definite starting point and try to explain, like, consistency and stuff like why I pick these kinds of things and why I think they're way better and well I don't know if you're gonna see this before or after I finish this blaster but I was sitting here trying to finish this integration right here this is obviously a nerf demolisher with a undermounted busby baron and this is very similar to the hellhound although my cutting guide marks are not nearly as good and if you're looking for information on how to do like good cuts on blasters to get started with integrations i can't really help you because honestly i'm not very good at it but i am pretty good at getting epoxy putty and things glued together and making sure everything looks sort of pretty and that's kind of why you've seen i already primered all over this thing right i've already put a layer of primer down and then i sanded more because when you put primer on stuff you're gonna see hot spots you're gonna see parts that go like wow that looks like crap don't be afraid to take it back to the workbench if you want to make yourself happy, work out some of those hot spots and primer over it. Obviously, you can't always get things perfect, but it's good to give yourself a couple of attempts, so don't be afraid to do something like that. I am really pleased with how this looks right now, and hopefully after I primer it again, it's going to be near perfect. But you're going to notice like the, the bodywork here looks really weird because like the putty has way different colors and stuff into it, and there's uh, all sorts of sanding and all that. Like, why, why is that? And I can kind of explain through my tools here. So... Putty work starts before really anything else, but of course, before that even, you have to do your gluing. There are different types of putty out there, and some people think that you can just use furrow bear putty down, and that works perfectly fine. And unfortunately, I had to say that's not really true. There are different types of epoxy putty, and the strongest stuff that I've ever used is that EP200 reactor whatever seal stuff. I know uh, Out of Dirt sells it on his Etsy, but you can find it at like Home Depot and stuff like that fairly easily. That stuff is really, really strong, but you can't really sand it. It does not sand well at all. So if you want something that's gonna be essentially rock hard, and that could be a good or bad thing, because if it's on like an area where there's no flex, it could just crack off eventually. I mean, it probably will, but it does dry really, really fast. It's really, really tough. It's really durable, but yeah, it doesn't sand worth anything. So something that's in between like that and then something that's way too easy to sand and way too weak but looks good is this Odie's Fix-It Stick. This is something that Boba Lolo showed me a long time ago and I pretty much swear by it. This is not strong enough to use just by itself, like mounting a stock to a blaster. You're gonna have some issues if you try to use just this as your adhesive, but it sands really well and it's very strong for what it is. Plus you get a lot of it because this whole tube is like double the size of a normal thing of epoxy putty, like Loctite repair putty or the re AP reactor seal 200 stuff. But again, it has its limits. It sands really easily, but it's not the end all be all when it comes to strength. And further down that line of less strong, but way easier to sand and work with is of course epoxy sculpt. This is like a two base, two part epoxy putty. Well, these things are two part, but it's one tube. You just cut it, mash it together. And this, you have to take equal scoops of both of them, mesh them together, and then work on your blaster. But the good thing about epoxy sculpt is a couple of things. One, the work time on this is like eight hours. Like even like six or seven hours later, you can come out and look at the project. And if there's a little imperfection, you can kind of smooth it over. This stuff works really well for that. And of course, it's also easy for you to like, oh, if something doesn't look right, like you put a big mold on there and there's like little creases and stuff like that that you hate. Well, Odie Fix it Stick, this works to a degree because this takes like 10 minutes to kind of heat up and cure. But you can usually take some water, like a little bit of water and kind of work it like clay and smooth things out before you even sand it, which will make your life so much easier. This, you can do that really, really well. And this stuff is pretty much the best when it comes to doing finishing body work. 
However, it's not very strong at all. So compiling that together, I'll open up this blaster now and you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to using lots of different things to make sure there's a lot of strength. Because what I have used on this blaster is a variety of glues and stuff over that epoxy putty. So you can see all the epoxy putty stuff right there and we'll get to what this red stuff is in a little bit. But I filled in this entire gap right here with hot glue. The reason for that is while it is pretty strong and it's not really that permanent, it is really cheap and it's really good to get in not only a little bit of flex because hot glue will bend and flex a little bit, which is important, but it also fills in a gap and makes things way cheaper so you don't have to fill this entire po pocket in with putty, I can just fill it in with hot glue. And then you see this kind of rough stuff in the edges right here, that's the glue that I used on top of the putty. So I have, I basically tacked it with hot glue on the outside, glued it on the inside, and then went over all of that with putty. And the glue that I think is pretty much ubiquitous for how good it is, is this Devcon plastic welder. Really, any kind of two-part epoxy that has the chemical, I'm trying to find it here, it's like mm, methacrylate, methyl methacrylate, acrylite. I'm not sure how you exactly pronounce that, but that stuff, it's, it has actually like a shelf stable time. Sometimes you can get bad batches of the stuff. If it's, if it's too yellow and it's gonna dry, it's gonna be rubbery and that's gonna be no good. But if you get stuff that's relatively fresh, you won't have an issue. Like I wouldn't buy this and stockpile it because eventually it's gonna go bad. I'd give it like six months and it's completely done. You're, wanting it. you're gonna wanna get more than that. And if it's sitting on a shelf for a long time, you're even more screwed. But this stuff not only has a bit of flex to it, but it's the best adhere to, it. it's the best. It really is the best kind of glue. That's usually what I use. Of course, if you want to put stuff in there to make sure that you like where it is, use hot glue. If you wanna like get something that's pretty strong but won't be under a lot of tension but you want it to stay there it's not always smart to use something like this for like a little dab usually you will use super glue for that i usually use the gorilla glue super glue this stuff like most super glues i ever get like the bottle is completely toast like this one's getting there i almost can't unscrew it but but it lasts way longer than it like the little tubes of like loctite so i hate it this stuff works pretty good and it's very strong which is really important now once you do all your kind of that body work, you're gonna need to sand it. And that's where things get kind of interesting. So there's a lot of different ways to sand stuff. I would say never use a Dremel with a sanding wheel. Sometimes you will because you need to take off a lot of material quickly, but I would definitely not recommend that. Get yourself a nice, file. This one has like, I don't know the exact name of it, unfortunately. It's rounded on one side and flat on the other. And you can see there's lots of putty in here and you can clean that up with a wire brush and stuff. Not too big of a deal. But I've had this thing for, man, I don't know, two years. And it's still amazingly good. This was like an $11 file. It was not cheap. You can buy like a whole package of files for like, you know, 10 bucks. But I really only need this one, like a rat tail file, to do some really good work. And this is what I do a majority of my, like, sanding and stuff, getting stuff prepped for being sanded. Not perfect. Sometimes you really do just need to sand stuff down. Like, getting rid of the Nerf logos and other little logos and stuff like that can be really difficult. And if you tack that always with a file, sometimes you're going to get yourself some really deep gashes and stuff in your work. And... That can be terrible. So be careful when you use a file. Sometimes you want to use like a razor blade or X-Acto. That will take off these Nerf logos and stuff like that pretty easily. I would usually just use a flat razor blade and just kind of punch at it, tear it right off the thing, sand it down, good to go. That being said, side cutters also work very good for cutting pieces of putty out and stuff like that, as does this. That will, I mean, the stuff like up here at the front the way to get that flat is I went in there with the knife and cut that down flat after it had been dried. So knives and stuff can do putty removal just as good. But if you're going to do like a finishing sanding job, I'm not going to bother you with like all the different kinds of grit of uh, sandpaper and stuff like that. I will say you're going to want something around 80 to 200. You're going to want something between 300 and 500. You're going to want something higher than that. 
and obviously you're going to start with the lowest you can. I usually use stuff that's around 150 to 320 for most of my sanding. I've got a couple of different things here. So I've got a sanding sponge. These can be kind of expensive, but man, are they really worth it because they flex and move as you're sanding and they're really, really nice and you have all these different edges to use them with. I like sanding sponges, but yeah, they can be kind of expensive for what they are. Recently, I've been trying these kinds of things, which are like, I, they're, they're sanding sponges to a degree, but they have replaceable sandpaper. It's basically just Velcro with sandpaper on. These things work really good. I'm actually kind of liking it because these things die pretty quick, but these, they don't really die. It's like, yeah, the sandpaper, you just tear it off, put a new one on, and they're relatively cheap. This one is like a finishing detailing one. It was $4 at Walmart, and it came with uh, 400, 550, or 400, 1,000, and 1,500 grit sandpaper. That is really good for finishing stuff. Not so much for removing a lot of material, though. But this is like 80 grit. And this was 10 bucks and came with eight sheets as well. So it's much bigger, so I can't get into nearly as many corners as that. But if I need to kind of rub in like a corner right here or something like that, this will work perfectly fine. And you're basically just going to sand it down as smoothly as you can and... The best sandpaper, because you can't really replace a good sandpaper, is actually this stuff right here. This is that 3M, it's basically epoxy-backed sandpaper. It's not a sheet, like, of paper. It's, like, really stretchy and malleable. And this stuff will last you so long, it's ridiculous. One sheet of this almost did the entire body work of the Paradigm Shift. This stuff is amazing. I will never buy normal sandpaper ever again. This stuff is amazing because you can, it just, you can fit it into every little crevice, use every single finger, every single tool to get your sanding done. It is amazing. I find this at Home Depot. You can also find it online and stuff like that. It's really, really good stuff. But after you sand and do a lot of body work and stuff like that, before you want to do like your finishing sanding, which is what you use like the high grit stuff for to kind of polish up your sanding work, you're going to have scratches in places on your blaster. Maybe you scratch something with a, your file, maybe something happened when you cut into it. And when you sand with like just a rough grit sandpaper, you're going to get little pock marks, little scratches, lots of things are going to happen. And that's what this Bondo glazing and spot putty is for. It doesn't have to be Bondo brand, but a glazing and spot putty. This stuff is basically the same thing as this, but it's in like a jelly kind of form. And basically what you do is you will put that on your blaster, put a big dollop of it, how, however much you need, and take a finger, preferably with a glove or something. You can see there's some in my hand because I don't have gloves right now. And you're going to just basically mush it into every single one of those little crevices that you need filled. And this stuff dries in like 10 minutes. And then you sand over that again. And that's why you can see these areas on this blaster where there's lots of that red stuff on top of the white putty. And those are basically divot scratches, holes, and everything that I filled in and sanded over to give it an absolute smooth finish with no pop marks or anything in it. And that is one of the key things that you can use to really make your integrations shine. And it's gonna be really important that you have these kind of variety of tools. There's not really that much in tools on this table. Like, this is not expensive stuff by any means, but the variety of tools to get into trying to make these kinds of edges right here nice and sharp or nice and rounded, however you're trying to get your blaster to look, making that stuff look like it's all one thing is really important to doing a good integration and the right tools can help you. But my most important tip is just go slow. Be prepared to take a blaster, smack putty on it, glue it down, sand it all pretty, put primer over it, look at it, realize you've made some mistakes, go back to the bench, sand that stuff down, put, a, put more putty on it wherever you need, sand that down, primer over it again until you're happy with it and then go on to your next step which would be your painting and making sure everything fits and works and stuff like that but i think this is a really important video if you want to see more of this like in depth check out my ak build video i'll have it linked in the corner and in the description below that will show you a lot more of the actual work process involved with doing this kind of putty work and that is basically me doing an integration from start to finish Unfortunately, those videos haven't been popular, so I can't really rationalize the spending of the time and everything and energy editing them to get 5,000 views on a video like that. It's suffering, but this kind of stuff, if you're looking to do integrations and making your own completely custom one-of-a-kind blasters, 
this is how you get started and uh, start small, work your way up and don't be afraid to break stuff because the only way you're gonna get good at doing integrations and stuff like that is by breaking stuff. And trust me, I have killed my share of blasters. Think of it like a video game, like an RPG. The more you kill, the higher you level up and the stronger you're gonna get. So that's kind of the way I look at it because I've been doing this for a long time and I feel like I've gotten significantly better than I was even just a year ago. So let me know if you have any questions or concerns down in the comment section below if I missed something. I really hope I didn't because I don't want to do another video like this, but I think I got the basics of everything down. But of course, I'd love to hear your feedback on that kind of stuff. Otherwise, this has been Walcom S7. Thank you so much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta up, up,